in the corresponding fixture last season. It was Real nil, Barcelona 7. Let's see if Barcelona can get anywhere near that. Your commentary team, Terry Gibson and Kevin Keatons. Thanks, Scott. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the southeast suburbs of the capital, Madrid, and the tiny Vallecas Stadium, small enough to only house three grandstands. The end away to our right-hand side, the goal being defended by Victor Valdez in this first half as just a wall behind it and blocks of flats beyond that of which several people as Valdez has conceded the first corner deflection made it difficult for the goalkeeper but some fans have got a bird's eye view in those uh, blocks of flats behind that end of the ground where they're watching this game for free and watching Jory Dominguez spotting up the first corner of the match Rayo Vallecano have vowed to be bold here on their home patch and look to take the game as much as they can to the joint league leaders. Watching it alongside me is Terry, and what are you expecting here? It's good to see initially the, let's say the, the front three for Barcelona, Messi, Vera and Pedro. It's for me, still the best trio that they can put out in their strongest starting lineup. Another central back pairing for Tito Villanova. Pleasing to see. Paco Jemez inside there, going with two strikers, an attack-minded midfield, two wide players, Javi Fuego, for me, the real, truly holding defensive midfield player. Remember, Chuy Dominguez from his Valencia days, an attacking player, second striker, maybe a striker. Four changes to that Barcelona team that beat Celtic in the Champions League with that late Jordi Alba goal in midweek. Here's Fabregas, one of the players coming into the team, along with Busquets, Montoya and Villa, Bartra, Mascherano, who suspended Iniesta and Alexis are the players to make way. Barcelona, by the way, twice tried to appeal Mascherano's red card last week in the game against Deportivo, unsuccessful in that. So their centre-back partnership of Song and Busquets Another change of many that Villanova has made. Did have a choice of playing Song and Adriano in there, Terry, but he's gone for Busquets. Yep, looks like it's uh, Busquets alongside Adriano. Song is it's Busquets and Song have clearly swapped over positions. Song going to play in the holding midfield role. Busquets going to play primarily in central defence. And Adriano, again the unlikely centre-back pairing. No room for Bartra, the youngster. Who Played so well midweek against Celtic. Well, can't have done the 21-year-old's confidence much good. He was uh, highly praised by all and sundry Bartra for his performance against uh, Glasgow Celtic. Must have been very frustrated in seeing midfield players, wingers even, being uh, chosen the centre-back positions because of the injuries they've had there to Piquet and Puyol in particular. But he got his chance, seemed to take it in midweek Bartra, but... Only on the bench. Typical centre-back play there from Adriano. He's going to have to get mentally tuned in, twisting and turning on the halfway line. It's in the centre-forward for Brian Vallecano, Deli Basic then skipping his way into midfield. We knew tonight was going to be another pairing that haven't played together, whether it was Adriano and Busquets or Adriano and Song, or Song or Busquets. I mean, there's, there's no central defender there amongst the three of them, but we knew whichever pairing it was going to be was yet going to be another starting centre-back pairing for Tito Villanova. The seventh different combination already this season. Xavi Hernandez. It's Busquets. Nice touch from Villa, who's flagged offside. Only David Villa's third start of the season. It's very tight. Raya Vallecano, just one win in the last five, had a bright start to the season, 1-2, and 
drew the other in their opening three matches. They have been conceding freely of late. 16 goals have gone against them in the last five games. As you heard earlier, this corresponding fixture last season. Barcelona won 7 0. So foul by Jordi Alba, and it could be a yellow card. And I don't think he can have any complaints. Three makes exactly the right decision there, Jordi Alba. It's a reckless challenge, there's no need for him to make this challenge. It's not a very dangerous area of the pitch on Jose Carlos, and he... It's poor defending, whether it's the, the fifth minute or the 85th minute, that fully deserved the yellow card. Poor decision by Jordi Alba. Jose Carlos with a free kick. It'll be a corner, came off. Adriano. A number of the Rayo Vallecano players began their careers at Barcelona. Goalkeeper Ruben, centre back Rodri, and left back Casado. Sano looking for the movement there of the captain, Pitti. Song looking to tidy things up. That's the defensive shape there for Barcelona. We know about their attacking prowess, but defending that throw in there. Back four ball shuffled over. The midfield was shuffled over. David Vera tucked back in as well. Very deep in the midfield position. Carno finished 15th last season. Lost an awful lot of goals from their squad though in the summer. The top scorer Michu went of course to Swansea City. Diego Costa, his loan period finished and is now back with high flying Atletico Madrid. And the other player to depart, Raul Tamudo. Maybe a goal kick. Very well, be a really good feature of the game. That Jose Carlos against Jordi Alba. Jose Carlos, a player, a, a winger, out and out winger who likes to take defenders on. I think there's going to be a personal duel between those two. Of course, Jordi Alba is going to try and run him the other way whenever possible and make sure that Jose Carlos is doing more defending than he is attacking. Best appearances from Ruben. He was a little fortunate to find a Rio teammate with that. He's got the pressure by Giuliano. He was a great pass back. He doesn't the weight on the pass back to the goalkeeper was too heavy for him to really deal with first time. He didn't want to have a touch because he was going to get closed down by a Barcelona player. Decent ball forward by uh, Tito. Tremendous uh, acceleration and change of pace over 10 metres there from uh, Adriano. Barcelona haven't got it out though, and uh, asking for a decision there, Raya Vallecano. Fabregas made the challenge. I think they were expecting to get the, a free kick at least. But the way the arms went up in unison there, they thought they were going to get the benefit of the referee's decision and possibly challenge inside the area it's Fabregas on Leo Baptiste out that'll be worth another look well, I can't know have the corner should they have had a decision here it's outside the box we should contact from Fabregas yes I think there is a foul 
certainly makes clear contact with the old Baptiste Al. He's just outside the box, it should have been a free kick. He clicks the ball there, good movement, good turn on the half turn. Let's the ball run across his body, and he's clearly bolted by Fabregas. Only partially away. It's a very good touch under pressure from David Villa. He was back defending on the edge of his own penalty area. And that's an area of the game that Paco Hemi is the coach of Rio who says that his team will do press as much as they can Barcelona high up the pitch it's excellent defensive work there from Villa Fabregas probably had his best game for Barcelona since he moved from Arsenal last week against Deportivo There's Montoya Incidentally, amongst the Barcelona substitutes, coming back from injury. More often than not, Terry Alves would have gone straight back into the side, but he hadn't been in the best of form prior to his injury. No, he hadn't, and Montoya's filled in really well. You see the offside against Barcelona. I'm sure Tito Bernardo is pleased to have another defender in the squad. Danny Alves, have to be content we're sitting on the bench tonight Montoya's been excellent since he's taken Danny Alves's place rightly keeps his position it's Casado's ball in it's been a good start for by Akano, the game is very evenly matched. The attacking tactics from Paco Jemez. So he an effect on the game. Not that Barcelona have things their own way. Forward by Rodri. away via Busquets. It's a win for the spectacular. It was a spectacular long pass, wasn't it? It would have been an unbelievable volley if that had flown in the, the top corner. Again, good change of direction of the attack. So pushing Barcelona back. They're testing this again. Makeshift back four for Barcelona. Tito. <laughs> Referee says play on. Looked like a dive from Villa. Referee saw it that way. <laughs> Barcelona can't get out. Valdez won't be troubled by the long range shot. Put the pressure high up the pitch. That starts with the two. Strikers, Deli Basic and Lau Baptista, and you see Javi Fuego there, punching into challenges. You see Chiro Dominguez, and he's gone forward there. There's a dive from David Villa, there was a dive perhaps from Chiro Dominguez. He's not buying it though, in all fairness, credit to him. Here's Messi. And we've got an overload here, Barcelona. Very quickly, having initially lost his position, Casado got him. Very important and timely challenge in there on Pedro. Pedro's touch just affords the defender the chance to get there and make that block. It's a little bit heavy to touch from Pedro, his first touch. Who gets away from him? Has Casado the chance to get the block on? Messi looking out, Jordi Alba. Is it 
much from Casado and Fabregas. I don't think the ball is within playing distance of Fabregas, and that probably is what swayed the referee's mind there not to give a decision. But it was clumsy defending, foolish defending. His eyes weren't following the ball, were they, Casado? Only one thing on his mind, just to halt the progress of Fabregas. Whiskey defending. Didn't want the pass there, Adriano. Done enough to earn the throw, but danger signals were up. Here's the challenge. He, wasn't, he just wasn't looking at the ball at all, Casado. The more I see it, the more it's a penalty. You can't do that. That is a foul, it's a free kick, anywhere else on the pitch. I thought the ball was further away in terms of playing distance, but I don't think it was there on reflection. Looking at the replay again, I'm not, I don't think Fabregas would have got there, but it certainly wasn't too far away from him. The referee to be swayed by the fact that Fabregas had no chance of getting there. We actually saw the body language and the look on Casado's face after the decision had been given. He looks at the referee as he was jogging his way up the pitch and he looked mightily relieved. Another referee on another occasion would quite easily have given that. The match official tonight is Perez Lassa. Something of a let off for Rayo Vallecano. Pity switching the play nicely here for Jose Carlos. That's what they were trying to do, come in off that right-hand side, onto that good left foot. Yep, two left foot to bring us. Uh, Jose Carlos playing on the right side. Quite happy to come inside and try and wrap his foot around it. That time it's a shot, but there'll be a few crosses like that as well. So important, Jordi Alba doesn't just let him do that. His own will, he has to still get there, block that cross, block that shot. The ball there from uh, Victor Valdez, who has been guilty of some high profile errors this season. Don't want to be too critical. Got a goalkeeper who has been extremely consistent since he made his debut over 10 years ago, but one or two little moments like that have been noticeable this campaign. some part be because of the different defensive uh, back fours he's had in front of him this season can't be easy for a goalkeeper I don't think he trusts the two central defenders as much as he trusts Puyol and Pekan that's clear and there's loads of reasons why he doesn't in terms of giving, giving them the ball out from the back you know, he's had all these different pairings looks to me in this match as if he trusts Busquets We'll give him the ball and Busquets goes deep. And it's so important for Barcelona's play. It's not just about defending, it's where they start their attacks from. The two centre-backs pull into wide positions. Busquets drops into when he's playing in midfield, into that central position. And they find a way somehow, even under the most extreme pressure, to get their way out the back. And I think with all the chopping and changing, that's been enforced on Tito Villanova. I think that's been lacking in Barcelona's play this season. And I think that's affected Valdez. You see him kicking the ball a lot more now than he used to when he had Puyol and Pique either side and he knew he could give, it, to give the ball to them and trust them with it. There have been comments in certain quarters trying to find other differences in Barcelona's style under Villanova from what we saw against Guardiola, but apart from the tendency because of the uh, examples Terry gave there of uh, Valdez kicking longer more often I don't think I uh, can spot too many differences under the respective eras here's Messi certainly doesn't change in his uh, makeup of goals he hasn't scored for 20 minutes <laughs> no, I agree with you Kevin it's still the same cut and thrust in attacking positions the rotation of positions between midfield players and attackers 
but no player passing the ball. Further than 20 metres at the time. Oh, lovely run here from Villa! Barcelona in front. Perfectly timed run from David Villa. Quite a simple finish in the end, but the timing of the run was the key here. It's relatively simple. Believe me, he makes it look simple. It's all about the time and pass, time and a run, and a wonderful finish. He certainly does know his trade. It's a first time finish past the goalkeeper. Keeps it on the floor. Knows exactly where he's going to put that ball. That's another assist for Cesc Fabregas. Three last week. Another one today. Find his real top form in midfield. Doing what he does best. In the attacking half of the pitch, creating chances. Get on the end of chances. Started every league game this season, Fabregas. I don't think it's a coincidence, Kevin, that if he's plays in that midfield three as well, that's his best position. He's taken the place of Iniesta tonight. In other games, he's taken the place of Xavi. I think he has to be facing the goal that he's attacking. He can make those late surging runs from midfield, be getting to the box and marked and not picked up. He plays his back towards goal and he's holding the ball up. He hasn't got that pace of a David Vieira or Pedro or Messi to play in that attacking trio. There's some player playing in that three man midfield. see there from Valdez, there was no option for him, and the right-back pushes on Montoya, Busquets didn't pull wide enough to receive the ball. Put you on PK there, they, they pull level with a six-yard box, they will drag players into positions, attacking players that they don't want to go to, and then when they do that, it leaves the space for Busquets, there's a lot more to it than what people think, regarding the way Barcelona get the ball out the back from Valdez, and it's just not functioning properly at the moment. The ankle injury sustained by Gerard Piquet is taking longer to heal than Barcelona expected. They felt initially that they would have had him back in time for tonight's game. Puyol out with a dislocated shoulder, so his uh, absence is going to be uh, for some time to come yet. against uh, Jordi Alba. He's the key player for Roy Vallecano, Leo Baptiste out, two goals last week, just 20 years of age, just 20 as well. Four goals this season for Rio. Looking to fill the place of the party to meet you. His first season in the first team, he's doing extremely well so far. He was in Barcelona, one or two problems when Rio can't get forward. There he is, uh, Baptiste Al, Brazilian. Good effort from Ryan Vallecano, they should be too downhearted conceding that goal. Have to stick to their principles, stick to the, the game plan. Just to try and get forwards, try and get players in the attacking half of the pitch. They remain positive. It is difficult though, once you've been hurt by an attack from Barcelona. You know for well before the game begins that they've got players that give it a chance, will take it. To have any chance in this game, they have to stick to the game plan and let's try and attack Barcelona and try and get at that back four. It's easier said than done, though. Well, this is a club in the capital that very much uh, bows the knee to Real Madrid in particular and uh, Atletico Madrid to a lesser extent. Of 
course, uh, Hitafe, another of the capital clubs in the Premier Division. But Rio come from uh, lesser stock, really. They only won promotion from the third tier of Spanish football four years ago. So they've come a long way in a short time. No budget to speak of at all. Like a number of Spanish clubs are considerably in debt at the moment. It's going to be a, a booking here for Deli Basic for deliberate handball. Again, it's hustle and bustle from the big striker, trying to win the ball back. He does put his arms up in the air. Good deal of experience, Deli Basic, Montenegrin international. what you're inexperienced this is third season here and I think he's due a testimonial isn't he after <laughs> he completes three seasons at one club <laughs> a rare occasion Rio have been in behind that Barcelona back four spinned away by Song there's Jordi Amat played in Barcelona derbies this time with Espanyol Never on the winning side. The yellow card now for Rodri. Referee can't ignore that, really. So Mitch will be up again, not early on. Rodri there. He's asking for the same punishment, clearly. Trips Pedro. He's an aggressive player as well, Rodri. Hamper him now. It's Messi, it's a quiet opening 27 minutes. Jordi Alba. Did well to reach that. Fabregas to David Villa. Two other options for David Vieira there when he finds himself on the edge of the box. Good work from Jordi Alba. Chased the lost calls and so did Lionel Messi. Sorry, Fabregas, and he lays it back. David Vieira, one or two other options. Blue and red shirts around the edge of the box, but nine times out of ten he goes for the shot. Well, although Barcelona won this uh, fixture last season by a very handsome margin of 7 0. It was their first win in five league visits here to the Vallecas. Historically, Rio have had a decent home record. They've lost only four of 13 league meetings here. They're not always pushovers. Basic tidied up comfortably by Jordi Alba. Oh, look at the difference in pace there. Pedro must have made up six or seven meters there on Casado. Messi. Next time Pedro has the opportunity to have a run at Casado, you bet he's going to take it. Oh, I'm trying to play quite a high defensive line, halfway in their own defensive half. Here's Messi, and now Xavi, and they're in here. Chance for Fabregas, moving with the save. Messi trying to help it in. That's all that Rayo can do to get it out for the corner. That high defensive line, they're doing it at times when there's no real pressure on the ball. Xavi there to Cesc Fabregas is getting forward every opportunity. Messi, lucky there not to get the rebound. As Tito eventually gets the header clear and followed up, and they give away a corner. 
which will be taken by Xavi Hernandez. It's just catching practice for Ruben, goalkeeper, who made three senior appearances for Barcelona back in the 2004-05 season. Rodri, the centre-back, also played for the Barcelona first team on the ball here. He made eight appearances. touch from Xavi and another taken on here by Messi now Villa trying to help it into the path of Messi again another Barcelona corner and it just goes in that two or three seconds there how difficult it is to play against Barcelona that was a supreme touch from Xavi really find a way through for David Villa again he was getting space on this side it's the near side of the pitch by Messi just missed time that Pedro goalkeeper really remonstrating with the defenders in front of him to allow Pedro that much room inside the penalty area we should have done better there Jory Dominguez. Here's Chavi. Now Villa. Fabregas, Messi, Pedro's got Montoya out wide. Challenge by Pity on Pedro. And the referee makes the decision. Then the assistant referee. Moses his flag after the referee is behind the whistle. The assistant referee has got a, a better view of that. He didn't raise his flag initially. Slightly fortunate, I think, Barcelona to be more this free kick. David Villa taking up an interesting position. Surely it'll be the left foot of Messi from this angle. <laughs> Messi! Difficult to see from that initial angle just how far that was away from the right-hand post of Ruben. It's always going wide of the far post. Who's the goalkeeper? Dive, does dive full length. He was pretty confident it didn't have enough curve to, to wrap itself and bend inside that far post. Fabregas. It's another well timed run. Keeper needed here. Just as well, he was awake to the situation there. Pedro's pace frightening at times. The half committed driver, I can't even win in the ball high at the pitch. But that's not going to be enough. We have to be fully committed. If Barcelona just find a little way out, then there's a high defensive line from Rival Icon, which is inviting those runs from deep in behind. Barcelona have got one or two decent midfield players that can find that type of pass to cut through that defence. I think the tactics are right, I just don't think that the players really fully trust themselves and believe it enough 
to really push on and really close down high up the pitch. There's uncertainty there from Barcelona when they're trying to get out of the back as well. Jose Carlos. Trust the right foot. Now he's going to have to. It's not bad. Another one by Adriano. Well, there's not trouble by the volley from Pitti. It's the second spectacular volley of the night in his try. Again, unsuccessful, but good to see the. They're crossing it, the opposite winger getting himself in the box as well. Two strikers in there causing problems for the Barcelona defenders. Baptiste down, Deli Basic almost getting on the end of that cross. Students of the world game, I'm sure, will recognize the strip of Rayo Vallecano, very famous Argentine club where the distinctive red sash down the white shirt, Argentina's river plate. Rayo have adopted uh, this strip since uh, River Plate used their training facilities back in the late 40s ahead of a friendly against Real Madrid. They gave them a set of shirts and they've kept them ever since. Messi, good run by Montoya to his right, wasn't used. Pedro, Montoya making another run forward. Pedro takes the tumble, referee says no foul. Here's Pitti. Throw here to Rayo. Choi Dominguez. Tito. Churi Dominguez. No real pressure at all there on uh, Montoya. The amount of white shirts, though, that we get themselves into an attacking position. We saw Tito pushing in there, the right back. Casado was high up the pitch. Adriano, Jordi Alba, he's blocked off, the referee's going to book Jose Carlos for that, deemed it to be deliberate obstruction. Third yellow card of the game, already for Rayo, have got one of the poorest disciplinary records in La Liga this season, they've had 33 yellow cards prior to tonight, three red. If they will get anything out of this game, they have to keep a full complement out there. Fabregas. Scoop that into the path of David Villa. That extension Barcelona passing their way out the back. There's a cast there, we see Ryan's picked up the yellow card. Difficult to see whether it was intentional or whether Joe Jordi Alba runs into Jose Carlos. There's Messi. Trouble. Pace comes in very handy for 
Adriano. At times he gets himself called out uh, positionally. Of course, it's not a position he's used to. It's a lovely pass into the path here of Messi. Julia Mack did very well to hold him up, at least initially. Xavi. David Villa! Offside. That had to be close. That's a special little phase of play now. He's offside, the assistant referee gets it right. That's an excellent defensive work for Jordi Amat, because Messi looked through it after a wonderful through ball for Xavi. Just prior to that, Martin Montoya did brilliant work out from the back, from the right back, run right into the attacking half of the pitch, dribbling past players. That shows why Tito Villanova has confidence in him to pick him ahead of Danny Alves. David Villas, excellently taken goal, set up by Cesc Fabregas. In the 20th minute, still the difference. Song losing out. Came off a Rio player last, shot from uh, Leo Baptistao. Looks like it was heading on target here. Yep, it's going to stand with a decent effort. The flicks off Deli Basic, Casano, the full back who won the ball in an advanced position. That's what I mean with Ryan. It has to be all or nothing. They can't be hesitant in terms of pressurising and closing them down because if some players do it and some players don't, then they'll just get carved open and Barcelona break through that initial pressure. Both these clubs, by the way, have uh, Copa del Rey matches in midweek. Fourth round, Rayo Vallecano have been drawn against the second division club Las Palmas. Barcelona's opponents are Alaves. You might remember them from La Liga in fairly recent times. The UEFA Cup finalists a few years back against Liverpool. They're now playing in the regional league, third tier in and around the Basque region. Barcelona should get through comfortably. Just a little collision there involving uh, Tito and Villa. The crowd reacted, the referee didn't make much of it. Initially, to Valdez makes a relatively comfortable save, but decent work there by Deli Basic. Yeah, Skips doesn't deal with it. Deli Basic is persistent, gets a decent strike in on goal. Victor Valdez, comfortable save, but it's been a more than a good half for Ray Vallecano. Just the one goal behind, we saw the stats there 52 48 percent. Possession in favour of Barcelona, that's as close as it gets. Offside. Via. That just goes to show how well Ryan had competed. But unfortunately, on a couple of occasions, perhaps the final ball lacking a little bit of quality. And close offside for Barcelona. And again, I think the right decision. Barcelona's various tactical systems and formations, but Rayo have been courageous enough against Barcelona to, for them to play almost a, a 2 4 4 formation. As we 
you saw both fullbacks are pushed into midfield, both the wingers are pushed up high up the pitch. Tito Villanova warned these players that this will be a tough game. And it certainly is that so far. Just got their noses in front. Great finish from David Villa. Plenty still left in this game for the home team. That's a poor touch by uh, Tito. He's trying to work off that now, but he's happy to put a nudge in the back off Pedro. didn't even compare to Casado's nuts, did it on Fabregas? <laughs> Almost uh, through our one minute of stoppage time. been competitive in this first 45 minutes he continues to be an absorbing watch at the Vallecas Stadium David Villa with the only goal Barcelona we feel should have had a penalty at 0-0 but they just have that one goal advantage at the break well that's the reason why okay well let's see if we can get the second goal let's get we join our commentary team Tony Gibson and Kevin Keatons welcome back to the Vallecas in Madrid Barcelona have conceded the first goal in six of their 13 games in all competitions this season. But tonight, they're defending that lead given them by David Villa's fourth of the season. No changes in personnel out there. Raya Vallecano having three players booked in that opening half. Jordi Alba picked up a yellow card for Barcelona in the first 45. Yet another change in the back four. He's not fielded the same back four in successive games this season, Villanova. And they're being asked one or two questions from the spirited Raya Vallecano side. Despite the fact they're behind Terry, I think it would have been quite a positive home dressing room at the break. Yeah, I think they're just... They the coach, Paco Jemez, would just be trying to reinforce the belief in his team that they can get something from this game in the way that he's asked them to play. They have no doubts, they've got nothing to lose. As I said, I think if they really do go for it in terms of pressurising it, winning the ball in the attacking half of the pitch, well, I really do believe that 1-0, that's obvious, they do genuinely still have a chance to, to get something from this match. Certainly found goals hard to come by here, though, this season. Amazingly, they've scored 11 goals in the league this season. Eight have been away from home. That uh, statistic very much points to a lack of uh, creativity, perhaps. Maybe just uh, pacey counter-attacks have been the norm. And here's a lovely run from Montoya, and it's Messi! Inevitable. What a finish. And when he gets one, he normally doesn't stop at that, certainly not lately. It's his 16th of the season, and he's 72nd in this calendar year as he hunts down Gerd Muller's world record 85 with a couple of months to break it. It's a crushing blow for Brian Vallecano. Barcelona do so well there, Montoya plays a huge part, it's a great cutback, really intelligent pass, back to the edge of the box. Lionel Messi makes it look so easy, and it's a thunderous shot, accuracy is incredible. He wraps his foot around the ball slightly, it's not, he doesn't hit it with the laces, it's a control finish with power. It's just so depressing that he makes the game look so easy. <laughs> That's not an easy chance. Yes, he's unmarked on the edge of the box. 
perfect first touch and in finds the top corner. Handball here against Song. Wasn't it Gerard Piquet who came out with a great line about Messi's feet? He said they're not feet, they're like fingers. The way they just grasp around the ball, whether he's shooting the goal or moving the ball around an opponent. I thought uh, summed it up perfectly. Control was instant. in by Chori Dominguez. And Valdez having to get down to make the save. A smart shot by uh, Javi Fuego. As he backs up the play well here, and central midfield play out. The bits and pieces when they spill out from the edge of the box. Good shot on target. Well, they need a quick reply here, Rayo. Oh, and they maybe should have had it. This is a chance, great response from Rowe to conceding that second goal. Bernie Basic at the near post, he's just beyond the, the near post when he gets contact with the ball, so he has to flick it. We can't head directly with power. In towards that near post here, we see the effort from Javi Fuego. Smart goalkeeping from Valdez. Forward by Casado. Just looking at uh, Las Bangura there, who will be a likely substitute for Rayo Vallecano sooner rather than later in their current predicament. Alexis Sanchez. It's uh, Deli Basic. Roll policed here by Busquets. Messi. Xavi. Chori Dominguez. Now Fabregas. Messi ended to Took the free kick from the wrong position. <laughs> Jordi Matt back here with uh, Ruben. Given no chance at all by Messi with that early second half goal. Nice touch from Xavi. This is David Villa. That's a good example, isn't it? Lionel Messi chasing the lost calls, forcing Ruben into a hurried clearance. Barcelona 2-0 to the good. Of course, then Barcelona pick up the next ball, the loose ball, straight back in. Barcelona nearly find themselves with a shot and goal. Who can take heart? Last night, haven't kept a clean sheet in the away match this season in the league. Whilst their success for Barcelona is not going to be built on keeping clean sheets, it's all about attacking play. Tito Villanova fed in by Pedro. It's inviting, but too much for Messi to deal with. But he got a thumbs up anyway, Pedro, for the attempt. I'm sure Tito Villanova would be absolutely delighted if his team could go on and keep a clean sheet. Been too many of them this season. Barcelona have conceded eight goals in their last three league games. Some 
included the four at Deportivo last week in that amazing match at the Rio Thor. Barcelona 3 0 up after 18 minutes. It only edged the game by 5 4 in the end. Rio fans wanting that to be construed as a back pass, couldn't be. There's uh, Leo Baptistao. Jose Carlos. And Jordi Alba will be happy to show him onto his unfavoured right foot. He's going to the back pass. And Jonah disguised one or two passes in his career, but I don't think that was a disguised back pass. Even though he's Brazilian. Certainly not in the, the class of Dani Alves when it comes to looking one way and passing the other. <laughs> Jose Carlos. Taken on here by Tito, so it's grateful gloves of Victor Valdez. Long range attempt, wasn't a bad one either, that was all of 40 metres from Valdez's goal. Happy Fuego with the effort. It's actually Jordi and Matt. Centre back who decided he'd have a pop here. And the player on low for Mesmanyel, fancy his chances against Victor Valdez from distance. <laughs> Offside against Chori Dominguez. I'm sure that's been good, or going through his wall up. I'm sure a pack of Hemes can make this team any more. Attacking, Troy Dominguez there, being caught offside. He's had to try all different formulas, Tito been over it in the heart of defence. At the moment they haven't conceded a goal, perhaps this is the one. <laughs> Adriano and Busquets. <laughs> if anyone had that, Adriano and Busquets in the sweepstake for a central defender for Barcelona, very unlikely I would consider. Is Villa Fabregas Montoya? Is that another good game? Martin Montoya Fabregas earns the corner. So it was the change that we expected it would be first for the Rio coach, Paco Jimenez, Las Bangura, stripped and ready. But they're not going to make it whilst they're defending the corner. Messi to take. And now Bangura can get on. It's the captain, Pitti, who's going to make way. So, younger legs. Guinean international, only 20. Had some interest from Real Madrid, Las Bangora, in 2011. He's come up through the ranks here. At Rio. And certainly bring some extra pace to the home side's attacks. Captain's armband now around the arm of uh, Javi Fuego. Tito. Jose Carlos. Casado. 
certainly younger legs than Pitti and certainly faster. And it's a positive move from Paco Jemez. Pitti might be a little bit more responsible when it comes to defending aspects of the game, but it's a, it's a bold move from the Rio coach. Casado. Jose Carlos. Chiri Dominguez, but with Carlos again. Casado got that better than uh, Pedro. Who is Las Bangora? Looking to make an immediate impact. Inside Martin Montoya. Right footed player playing the left. Montoya now going to have to switch on. Now that's been good. It's the opportunity to do that. Quite as easy as that. Carlos and Tito Jose Carlos again one of his favoured left foot didn't begin to get hold of it as he would have wished given away by Adriano on side with plenty of white shirts forward here Dali Basic with a touchdown, don't think he meant it. Good save from Valdez. Again, it was an attacking quartet, wasn't it, from Ryan? The body's in there. Ball breaks free, eventually, on the edge of the box. Heavy Fuego again, backing up the plate. And again, hits the target. Another good save from Valdez, that's a really good save. Side against Pedro. It's a smash and spill for the home team. They're, they're very much on top. Just the odd bounce of attacking play from Barcelona. Paco Hemis sticking to the, the tactics with the wingers on the what you'd call the opposite sides that they would prefer. Bangura right footed on the left, Jose Carlos left footed plan on the right. He's hoping the fullbacks and Therefore, we'll give them added width as well. Javi Fuego has been smashed in midfield. He's been solid defensively. He's covered every blade of grass. He's got forward as well. He's backed up the play. So he knows he, he can be the trigger for the closing down and for the players in front of him. Encouraging, encouraging the press and go and win the ball back. Chilean international Alexis Sanchez, his arrival into the match is imminent. Down goes uh, Xavi. Xavi picked up an award this week along with Iker Casillas, who uh, jointly received Spain's prestigious Prince of Asturias Award, which honours achievement in sporting, cultural, scientific and other realms. Casillas and Xavi won it in recognition of their contribution in bringing harmony and success to the national team. And in some respects, harmony back to the Clásicos. David Villa coming off, man who got the opening goal. Here it is, fed by Fabregas, came in the 20th minute. And has had a decent game and only his third start of the season. Alexis enjoyed playing against Rayo last season. He got three goals in the two league meetings. Still uh, nursing him through, don't they, David Villa? It's around the hour mark. Of course, they know far better than you and I sitting here watching. See him in training every day. And I don't think he's very far away now from being 
100% fit, letting off the leash. He'll be disappointed tonight. He's been brought off at this stage of the game. He'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Still plenty of energy in this Rio side. Next goal, absolutely crucial. Oh, given away, it's a gift here for Messi. Nowhere near the target in the end. They presented that on a plate to Leo Messi. It's a through ball from the Brad Raikana player. Couldn't have been any better from Lionel Messi once he gets through again. Jordi Amet does well, doesn't give it up. He sticks with Lionel Messi stride for stride. Puts enough pressure on him. to make the young Argentine miss the target. Fabulous defensive work off the front line there from Alexis. Something that's highlighted this wonderful Barcelona team in recent years, their ability to defend so well via the front three. Obviously, we've had some little touches. The little dink that we've seen so successful in the past on so many occasions. And this is the target now. He's always going wide in the, the far post. Here's Las Bangura. This is out to Busquets. Smashing play there from Son. As soon as Busquets stepped out, he stepped straight back in the centre back. Certainly learning the Barcelona way quickly. So in that position, looks more, far more comfortable playing in that holding defensive midfield role. Nice touch there from uh, Pedro. Offside against Alexis. Ball forward by Casado. This is Las Bangora. He might have been going for goal there, but I suppose he was playing the percentages games. If he miscued it, as indeed he did, he almost turned into a very good cross. I don't think the power here when you see him, you see how high they are playing the offside. It was a close one again. In there for a handball against Adriano. Leo Vallecano ready to make another change. Casado coming off. Nicky Billy who's on a season's loan from Villarreal. The loan spell at uh, Elche last season, the Danish striker. Having to defend at the moment, Rayo Vallecano, Barca wanted to put it to bed and went too far away from doing so, agonisingly out of the reach of Xavi. Set to go for broke now, another striker coming on for a defender. Might leave spaces at the back, it will leave spaces at the back for Barcelona to explore, just couldn't do so. On that occasion, the, cut, the cross. Being right footed, always swinging away from, from Chavi. Difficult for the midfield player to get that definitive touch on it. Well, Paco James, the Raya coach, said his team would be bold, and they have been that. I thought he came out with some ill chosen words about Celtic's performance in the Champions League at the Camp Nou in midweek when the Raya coach said he would be ashamed to adopt Celtic's tactics. There are different ways to face Barcelona, and Celtic were seconds away from a highly creditable draw in midweek. And uh, I'd like to think some of his words were lost in translation, and he 
He didn't mean them the way they came out. This is his first season in top flight, so it's the first time he's played Barcelona, so how would he know? His team have done well tonight, I'll give him respect for that. But other than that, I think his, his words are particularly poorly chosen. Celtic were really unlucky. 94th minute, Jordi Alba goal, bit of a scramble goal as well. To lose by the old goal at the, at the Camp Nou. And if the Celtic fans weren't already looking forward to the home game against Barcelona, of course they were. Takes on added interest after the match in midweek. Here's Chabby. Here's for handball. Referee just motioned that he was about to blow the whistle against Song, but decided not to. Had it messy. Deliver the pass there. The referee has poor play back. This could be red. <laughs> that was such a bad tackle from Julie Amat. It's a scissor tackle from behind. This is the next match through suspension. But this is a very nasty challenge from behind. He can't win the ball. Look, right leg, left leg. Just chops down here and Messi. Should have been a yellow card for the right footed lunge and a yellow card for the left footed. Chori Dominguez for descent has also joined Amant in the book. They felt that was a handball by Song. It was. Yeah. Five Rayo players now on a yellow card. It's Messi! It's a decent stop. One he'd expect to make, I think, but uh, he read it well, Ruben. It's always good to see the goalkeeper make the catch as well. He's losing the heads a little bit now, feeling sorry for themselves, feeling that things are not going their way. Keep it in there, with the chest control. chest on that, not to be a handball. Forward by Rodri, there's Bangura. And the mood not being lightened here by referee Perez Lassa's latest decision against the home side. Franco Vasquez is going to be the last of the Rio substitutes. A midfield player. Fabregas. Pedro. Song. Xavi. Back to him by a Messi. Montoya. Xavi. Forward by Chori Dominguez. Busquets. First to read that. Happens with three men central defence. Ryan, which means it's been good. It's going to have to be a left sided wing back, which he's not going to do. He's a left winger, he's a right winger, a left winger. Out and out attacking players, so they're going to be three against three on lots of occasions now. Barcelona, this is Fabregas, Messi, 
and a free header in there and offside Alexis still very good save from Ruben yep Alexis Sanchez in an offside position two problems at the moment so this is a handball which is a chest control Leo Baptista makes way for Franco Vasquez. Argentine currently on loan from the Italian club Palermo. Troy Dominguez. Then okay, isn't he? Midfield, Charlie Dominguez. You see, there, we're used to seeing him high up, going high up the pitch for Valencia. You see the effort from Lionel Messi, you could say from Ruben. Song, it's a very high wire back line, but effectively catches Alexis in the trap. to say it is a fault of Alexis Sanchez get caught offside on too many occasions but he should find it quite easy to break that offside track the way he's run make it from a bit deeper he's going to get up more opportunities 15 minutes to go the way that they're playing Raya Baikal is out Busquets. Xavi Hernandez, now Song. Pressed the ball well there, Arroyo. Got a free kick against Alex Song. Ironic applause from the home fans for the referee. Paco Jemez, wondering why the referee is uh, signalling him out. Maybe he was joining in the sarcastic applause. So there's 20,000 people done it, and he's picked on me. <laughs> and all those people on the balcony behind the goal as well. is still remonstrating. He's been sent from the technical area for his misdemeanor, whatever that was deemed to be. I think the referee reacting to his fourth official. A gesture, a word out of place. Paco Jimenez sent from that uh, technical area. He'll be straight up to one of those flats, when not he? Get a, a viewpoint from one of those balconies. Royal desperate for the next goal in the game, and they might have had it. What a waste from Rodri. Shakes his head, the former Barcelona youth team player, stolen unseen. He's looked to Elvis there, urging his teammates to remain fully focused, make sure they concentrate, and they switch off. He's determined to keep the clean sheet. The angle is quite acute. Could he have cut it back? He's probably gone for glory, gone for glory at the near post. But anything back across the goal out might have paid dividends. run by Jordi Alba, that's it, game over, Xavi Hernandez. Devastating. So difficult to defend Barcelona when they're 
alert, intelligent, and the movement and the finish from Xavi Hernandez quite delightful. All three points heading back to Catalonia. Yeah, it's just a simple goal. It's routine. It's a little give and go from a throw-in. Jordi Alba once he gets past Tito there. Jose Carlos. Again, he has the intelligence to make the cut back. They do that so well to Barcelona players. He cuts it back. <laughs> and that's an extremely difficult technique there for Xavi. From that distance as well. He hasn't got much to aim at. He has to hit it first time. That's exactly what he did. Smashing finish from the midfield maestro. Something of a milestone. It is his 50th La Liga goal. Pace here of Pedro. Session has gone against him. He's disappointed about that. It's difficult, isn't it, when you play Barcelona? I mean, you're 2 0 down. I wonder if there's a cut off point where you think we're not going to get back into it now. We can't leave ourselves too open at the back because that's what's going to happen now. We're going three at the back and asking wingers to play slightly more deep or a lot more defensive than they would normally do and at the same time get the goals. In by Pedro, it's for Fabregas. With ruthless efficiency, Barcelona stretching out now ahead of Atletico Madrid to a three-point advantage ahead of Atleti's match on Sunday. He's been doing it all night, he's been kept getting into really good attacking positions in the box. He's been provider in the last couple of games, now he gets himself on the score sheet. Excellent cross from Pedro, plenty to aim at though, loads of space in the 18-yard box. Fabregas, important that he's making that determined run at this stage of the game to show his hunger and desire to get the goal. Once he gets there, there was no doubt he was going to side foot that in. Pass to Ruben for the fourth goal for Barcelona. So Mark Bartra on to replace Jordi Alba. Will allow Adriano to top in to his more accustomed uh, left sided position, left back, and Barter in to partner Busquets. An eighth different centre back partnership this season. Well, there's plenty more. Spanish football to enjoy this weekend. Atletico Madrid joint leaders with Barcelona before a ball was kicked this weekend at home to Osasuna, 7 o'clock Sky Sports 1 HD, followed by Real Madrid's trip to the island of Mallorca on the same channel. Our online offering via Sky Sports Extra via the lead Real Sociedad 8.30 Monday. All the goals and the highlights programme on Tuesday. Pedro. I don't know if Tito Reno is considering introducing young Teo. He's got a half a pitch to run into. Loads of Rayo Vallecano players. Nice chance to go for Jonathan Dos Santos. That would be a relief to the Rayo Vallecano defenders. But it isn't Teo. One of the Barcelona central defenders now is that by trade. Chavi just holding the bottom of his ankle. I guess that's going to be the change. Coming from De Santos for Chevy. Does he get caught here? Vasquez. Still one of the real challenge, nothing on toward. Just a little knock, I think, for Chevy. 
yet another influential performance for the captain in the absence of Carlos Puyol. And a rare glimpse this season of Jonathan Dos Santos, the Mexican international. In fact, it's his first involvement of the season, the 22-year-old midfielder. Score lines uh, somewhat harsh, I feel, on uh, Rayo Vallecano for the, the effort they put in. Don't really deserve to be on the end of this particular score line at the top of your screen. A lot of people who haven't seen the game will think that yeah, it was routine for Barcelona. Another simple away win. They've had to work for this, make no mistake. Hardly been any periods of this match. Terry, where they've visibly been coasting. No, the, the big difference between the two teams has been the, the quality of the finishing, the quality of the final ball, the cutbacks. Made the, the ball on a plate for Villa's goal, Messi's goal, Chavez and Fabregas, excellent attacking play. This is Alexis Messi. It's a rare bad miss from uh, Lionel Messi. Beautifully supplied here by Alexis. You'd expect Messi to do better from there. Tito is saying, I could have put that one in. Not sure he could. <laughs> but a word, Terry, on Villanova's uh, season so far, taking over from the great Pep Guardiola. They're going to reach 25 points in the first nine games of a La Liga season for only the second time in their history. That says it all. I think it's been absolutely brilliant so far. He's had to deal with a lot with the defensive players missing. He's been courageous. What's impressed me most of all is that he's seen when it's right to make changes during the matches. The way he's handled himself, I expected no different. He's worked under Pep Guardiola, works alongside Pep Guardiola. He knows how Barcelona works, but the important thing for me was how he would manage the team during a game. And I think it's, it tells itself, I think it's seven goals this season from Barcelona have come from substitutes that have come onto the field of play when he's thought it was the right time to make the change. Tactically, he's been really good, really astute. And I think it's been absolutely superb. Doesn't surprise me, though. Not come as a real surprise. He's got a quality team, brilliant footballers. Here's Messi, it's timed well to the run of Pedro. Ooh, he was trying to catch out Ruben at his near post there, that was heading into the back of the net, goalkeeper had to be aware here. It's a cheeky effort in the end from Pedro. He initially tries to supply Alexis Sanchez. Jordi Hamat really crashed into a few challenges now, he could do with a final whistle. He's losing his head slightly, the youngster. With Carlos and Adriano there. I'm sure their paths crossed in their severe days. Former teammates. <laughs> Just see by those possession stats that Barcelona haven't had as much of the ball as they normally enjoy. Won't be a surprise to Villanova, he said prior to the match that he didn't feel that Raya Vallecano would concede possession a great deal in this game, they haven't, they have been brave, they promised to be. You rather get the feeling they're not going to be heavy goal scorers this season. As Terry points out, it's been the principal difference tonight. Alexis Sanchez was in an offside position, but he doesn't touch the ball. Fabregas makes the run from deep. 
Uh, in for a fifth, maybe it's Messi. Oh, yes. Just not prepared for one in a game. I think you go back to early April for the last time. He scored only once. When he gets on the sheet, he'll always be after more. And he now joins Salva Balesta. The last player to score 11 goals after nine league games of a season. That was back in 99-2000. He'll just lift it over the top. Drops his shoulder. Touches it round Ruben. It's a slightly difficult angle, but he was never going to miss from there. Lead goal number 13 of the season. That mean the world to him, wouldn't it? Joining Salva Ballesta. And he left. <laughs> it would mean the world to Salva Ballesta, that's for sure. <laughs> Here's uh, Las Bangura, offside. That goal for Messi, by the way, mentioned his tally in this calendar year, that he's chasing down Gerd Muller's world record, which has stood since the early 70s of 85 in a calendar year. Well, he's now on 73, and that goal he's just scored took him past the legendary Pelé, whose best is 72. That's a better comparison, isn't it? Pelé and Messi. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take Salva Ballesta out of the equation and slot Pelé in there. Unbelievable goal scoring from the world's best. On the wrong side again, they're going to make it six, are they? No, Ruben's had enough. And Alexis disappointed he couldn't get beyond the goalkeeper here. Suspicion of offside. He should finish this. He doesn't really get, he's going for the little lob, but he's, he's nowhere near enough height on the finish. And Alexis Sanchez, he needs goals. To boost his confidence. Las Bangora. They'd be certainly deserving of a consolation goal, Raya Vaicano. Said the scoreline's tough on them, but let's take nothing away from this efficient Barcelona performance, particularly in this second half. Rayo took a risk, took off a defender to bring on a striker. Ultimately, they paid the price for it, but as you said early in commentary, Terry, they had nothing to lose tonight. I thought they gave it a really good goal. The crushing blow for him was conceding the second so early in the second half. I think about a 10 15 minute spell where they could have gone for Barcelona, put more pressure on to try and get an equaliser, but then Messi got the second. Added on time in stoppage time. Victor Valdez hungry for a clean sheet. Looks as though he's going to get it. He is going to get it. And Barcelona march on imperiously under Tito Villanova. A comfortable final scoreline, and he will be full of credit for the opposition's performance. 5-0 at the Vallecas.